Hello and welcome to the next episode of the Explain series with your host, Dr. Brett Palmer, and this week it's the turn of Castleman's disease. So what is Castleman's disease? Well, it was named after Benjamin, uh, or Dr. Benjamin Castleman, and who described the disease uh, back in 1956. Now, Castleman's disease isn't actually just one disease, it's a, a group of common uh, disorders, if you like. Uh, the type of disorder uh, that describes Castleman's disease is effectively it's a, um, a lymphoproliferative uh, disorder, which basically means you have too many uh, lymphocytes in your blood uh, in your bloodstream, um, and it's usually characterised by uh, your lymph node uh, enlargement. Your lymph nodes uh, you've got lymph nodes all over your body. It's one of the motorway systems uh, of your body. The other mo uh, other way. The other motorway system would be your blood system, for example, your arteries and your veins, you've got the nervous system, and then you've got your lymph nodes uh, or your lymph system. Uh, and this allows um, uh, various uh, cells within the blood uh, to go around the body uh, and to fight uh, infection. And when you have too many uh, 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 lymphocytes in the bloodstream, uh, they can collect in uh, one, the largest lymph node, which is effectively the spleen, and also other lymph nodes. So you can have lumps and bumps uh, in your neck. Um, and that's when, uh, when, a, when your family doctor would say, are your nodes up, for example? And if you feel, if you have a bit of a flu or you have any other type of infection, usually uh, when your body's trying to find it, you get little lumps and bumps, um, uh, sometimes in the neck, which could be at the front of the neck, could be at the back of the neck, could be under your jaw, could be under your uh, armpits, uh, and also in your groin, but you have lymph nodes within the body uh, as well. Um, so it's a lymphoproliferative disorder, and uh, it is not a cancer though, but what can happen is if uh, Carlson's disease is left, it will more likely turn into some form of uh, lymphoma. Uh, so in short, um, they typically occur into people that have a compromised uh, immune system. For example, people uh, who have HIV and are unable to main, um, mount a particular response. So, you, uh, uh, Castleman's disease is split up into uh, three different uh, distinct types. You have unicentric Castleman's disease, a human herpes, eight associated multicentric Castleman's disease, and this is the, uh, as far as I'm concerned, as a HIV doctor, one of the main uh, types of um, uh, Castleman's disease. Uh, and also idiopathic multicentric uh, Castleman's disease. Now, the, the, the idiopathic uh, type can occur in people with what it seems to be um, a functioning immune system, uh, but uh, uh, obviously for this to uh, take hold, uh, there must be some kind of problem um, uh, with the immune system uh, anyway, even if it's uh, base. Uh, but uh, this discussion will con contain, uh, will concentrate on the main one, which is human herpes 8, uh, associated multicentric Castleman's disease. Okay. HHV8 is a herpes type virus, uh, much the same way as um, uh, uh, chickenpox, uh, VZV, uh, HSV, which is human simplex virus, Epsom Barr virus, um, CMV, uh, which is cytomegalovirus, and HHV8 is human herpes 8, uh, uh, sorry, human herpes virus number 8, also known as Carposis uh, virus as well. And this virus can cause um, um, uh, Castleman disease, and in particular, uh, multicentric Castleman uh, disease. And so, how does it present? Well, it presents like uh, most cancers do, um, uh, even though it is not a cancer. And so, fever, night sweats, uh, weight loss, um, uh, usually uh, lymph nodes are up, uh, commonly also around uh, the neck. Uh, you can have an enlarged um, liver and spleen. Um, as the spleen enlarges, it sequesters a lot of uh, other uh, blood cells, and so you have uh, anemia, um, but you can have pancytopenia as well. Uh, you also have um, hyperalbuminemia, which is a low albumin, and something called a polyclonal uh, hyperglobulinemia. <laughs> what that basically means is the immune system is wrong, and so what the body is doing is it's producing a lot of um, uh, immunoglobulins. Uh, and uh, polyclonal means different types of uh, immunoglobulins. Um, it's uh, a marker of immune dysfunction. It can be, it can happen in uh, myeloma, for example, uh, as well as uh, Castleman disease. There's quite a few um, uh, diseases that can cause hypergamma uh, hyper uh, globulinemia. 
So what are the features of multi center Castleman's disease? Well, as I said, uh, fever um, and uh, lymph nodes are probably uh, the two main uh, features. Um, uh, splenomegaly, well, that's right, basically the spleen is a, uh, the body's largest uh, lymph node, if you like. Um, and then uh, the other uh, symptoms are associated with um, uh, cancers in general, really. Uh, so pleurofusion, cystitis, uh, uh, edema, cough. Uh, jaundice, uh, neurological problems, uh, another autoimmune, uh, hemolytic anemia, uh, and other autoimmune uh, dysfunction. And you can also get a raised uh, CRP, a C-reactive protein. Um, now, obviously, just having one of these things on their own doesn't mean you've got Castleman's disease. Uh, you need a few of these um, uh, symptoms with a fever um, and uh, ideally with a raised uh, CRP. And so uh, what are the, the tests uh, for Castleman's disease? Well, um, we'll come on to the test in a moment um, because other common features that are not always seen uh, but can be seen in 40 to 50 percent of the, uh, the population that have Castleman's disease. And one is Castle um, Carposis sarcoma. We'll look at some pictures of that in a minute. Uh, hepatomegaly and also uh, uh, what's called pulmonary uh, involvement. So you have uh, lung problems as well. And that lung involvement could be uh, carposis sarcoma within the lungs and uh, could also be um, uh, fluid on the lungs or it all depends where the uh, uh, breathing problems as well, um, wherever the in, in large lymph nodes are, are happening within the body. Uh, so carposis sarcoma, um, this typically presents on the skin, has uh, purpley type um, uh, patches that can be spread uh, in various um, uh, places uh, around the body. Uh, it could be on the, uh, the face, um, uh, chest, back, could be on um, uh, the genitals, legs, but it can also be within the body as well. So it can be also within the lungs. So this is a bronchoscope. You can see this uh, patch at the seven o'clock position. Um, is a carposis sarcoma. It can also be in the gut. This is a visceral um, uh, carposis sarcoma as well, and there, there the arrow is pointing uh, to that uh, particular uh, lesion. Um, so, uh, in terms of the, the test, and there's no excuse. If, if someone is suspecting Castleman's disease, you have to test for HHV8 because that is the uh, human herpes virus 8 that um, is considered to cause. Uh, multicentric Castleman's disease, and you also have to test for HIV. Even if the person is um, elderly and lived the life of um, which uh, lived the life which doesn't uh, in any way, shape, or form uh, would think someone would have um, HIV, they still need to be tested um, because. Um, as far as I'm concerned, if I tested someone and that's HIV positive with HHV8 uh, with, uh, and they had lymph nodes, uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's Castleman's until proven otherwise. Uh, could you, uh, and what do you do? How would you prove Castleman's after you've done these? Well, the next test is a biopsy. The biopsy will tell you what it is, and then you can make up your management. Uh, what is that management plan? Well, uh, if the important reason why you do a HIV test, to be perfectly simple with you, if you don't do the HIV test and you diagnose it's Castleman's disease and you treat it's Castleman's disease, you're going to fail. It will not go anywhere until you've actually got the HIV under control. It's very important. So they need highly active antiretroviral therapy because uh, you won't go very far uh, without it. And so uh, you need to start that. Uh, and also uh, the Castleman's disease uh, does need to be treated. And obviously, if they've got pancytopenia and they're struggling, uh, they may, uh, you may have to have a splenectomy. That basically means the spleen needs to be removed. There are lots of various other uh, drugs here. Uh, the only drug I'm going to really point out to you is the last one, uh, rituximab. Uh, that's a very good uh, drug uh, for fighting HHV8. Um, and obviously, the people who will be looking after Castleman's disease will be the Hemonc guys, uh, the hematology, uh, oncology uh, specialists that deal with uh, Castleman's disease. Now, uh, I'm, I'm saying all these things about cancer, and then I said at the beginning, Castleman's disease is not a cancer. If Castleman's disease is left, it will probably go into some kind of lymphoma. Um, and that's why it's important to treat it and to treat it uh, as effectively as possible. And rituximab is a very common, uh, now a common drug to uh, treat it as um, uh, cleverer people than me uh, that figured out that using rituximab in Castleman's disease, I think it was at the Chelsea Westminster um, 
uh, would basically said, uh, show that this was an exceptionally uh, effective treatment. Uh, and other sensors have also uh, shown this uh, around the world as well. But if uh, you test for HIV, if you're positive, uh, highly uh, active antiretroviral therapy. So what's a prognosis? Before Rutex, rutexumab came along, um, it was not good, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, patients would invariably uh, develop uh, lymphoma and it would end up in, yeah, it would be a bad news story, unfortunately. However, we've, with rutexumab coming along, um, five-year survival has increased to uh, 60%. Um, and that's, I think, old data. It's probably got a little bit further than that now. And so it's, um, it's, it's, it's not a, a bad story. Um, and so it's uh, it, it's not all bad news. Uh, obviously, the sooner you treat it, uh, the better the prognosis, but that's with uh, most things in medicine. So uh, it was a, a short uh, broadcast, uh, or sorry, podcast on, um, or uh, vodcast even, uh, on carcinoma disease. And uh, these are some of the websites uh, which I've uh, used to help this uh, put this episode together. I hope you found it uh, informative and uh, see you next time. Thank you very much. Hope you have good sexual health. Please like, subscribe and share. Take care. Bye bye.